The Supreme Court of Canada has unanimously ruled to uphold the safe third country agreement between Canada and the United States. Now, that agreement makes it illegal for refugees in the United States to cross the border and then seek asylum in Canada. The decision is being condemned by human rights groups, including the Canadian Council for Refugees. The U.S. is not a safe country for refugees. And our organizations have brought overwhelming evidence that sending people who are seeking safety here back to the U.S. causes serious violations of rights, rights that are protected both under the Canadian Charter and international law. Karina Roman has been following this story and has more on the ruling and reaction. The ruling basically is that the agreement is not unconstitutional, that it does not breach Section 7 of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and that section is the one that guarantees life, liberty, and the security of the person. Um, these individuals and groups brought this court, this case uh, through the courts, uh, though, because they believe that the U.S. is not a safe country, as you heard there, um, or at least it's not as safe as we'd like to believe. Uh, but the court said, yes, there is a risk of detention um, if people are sent back from Canada at that border back into the U.S. because they landed in the U.S. first. Um, yes, detention conditions in the U.S. may be not as good as what we have here. And yes, the risk of deportation back to the country of origin is a true risk, and the U.S. perhaps is not as sympathetic or doesn't have as many or the same grounds for seeking asylum as Canada has. All that to say, the court says a degree of difference between the two asylum schemes can be tolerated um, as long as they do not are they're not un, fundamentally unfair. And the court found that they're not fundamentally unfair. Also, the court found that there are safeguards in place in Canada and in the U.S. in terms of exceptions and exemptions that can be granted. They call them safety valves um, that can be granted on individual cases, such as uh, administrative deferrals of removal, temporary resident permits, humanitarian and compassionate exemptions, public safety exemptions. That did not go down with the organizations uh, advocating for refugees, though, very well, because they say, while these are uh, exemptions on paper, they're not exemptions in practice. Have a listen. We are disappointed, however, that the court ruled that the STCA, the Safe Third Country Agreement, does not breach Section 7 of the Charter in terms of the right to life, liberty and security, uh, based on the availability of so-called safety valves in the legislation and in the agreement. From CCR members' experience working with refugees on the front lines, these safety valves do not in practice exist. And that's because the border guards don't really use them and perhaps have not been directed to use them. Um, and so the reality of the situation is that the people get turned back. Uh, there is one silver lining in this ruling for the, the advocacy groups, uh, and that is that the court says uh, is, is sending back uh, to the federal court, which is where this all started, um, Section 15, which is the equality rights uh, a part of the Charter, saying that that's not, the, the federal court didn't rule on that, so they they want to get reasons for uh, and ruling on whether perhaps it does contravene that section, because there are different standards uh, and rules in terms of our asylum uh, uh, programs in both countries when it comes to gender-based violence and discrimination. Uh, and so the argument is uh, from these advocacy groups that uh, that part is still is so different uh, that Canada should have exemptions uh, for people seeking asylum based on those. Now, the immigration minister, Sean Fraser, was asked about that, about it going back to the federal court for that part, and, and what he thinks of this idea that perhaps there should be exemptions for gender-based discrimination and violence. Have a listen to what he had to say. There are going to be areas, including gender-based violence, where we need to initially have a case-by-case -case approach. But to the extent that we can work with civil society organization, uh, with uh, affected persons, with their advocates in the months and years ahead, uh, where it makes sense and we're dealing with a population who does not have the ability to be safe uh, in the country where they first seek to make an asylum claim, uh, I think those are good areas for collaboration that we may seek to identify as we continually reform the quality of these agreements. So, Karina, what are the consequences of the decision? Well, it really is sort of a upholding the status quo. Uh, the government doesn't have to scramble now. There was a perhaps potential of an influx of asylum seekers if the decision had been the opposite. Uh, Sean Fraser was asked, well, even though the 
court upheld uh, this agreement. Uh, could you possibly suspend the agreement? Because that is something the advocacy groups are still asking for. And he said uh, no to that. Um, as you know, Hannah, just the, the agreement was recently revamped. So it used to only apply to official border crossings. Uh, and then there were these loopholes that people were using to go to other crossings like Roxham Road that weren't really crossings at all, but had become that way because the agreement didn't apply there. So people weren't turned back from there. Well, now it applies across the whole border. And so routinely p asylum seekers are being turned back into the U.S. That has advocates saying, uh, and former refugees saying that makes things even more dangerous because of where people will seek to now try and come into Canada. Have a listen to this. This will not stop refugees from crossing the border because people who travel thousands of miles to make it to Canada seeking a safe home will continue to do so regardless of the safe third country agreement. The only thing that will be that it will put them in further danger as they cross through unofficial ports of entry through farmers' fields and through uh, relying on smugglers. So they say that makes it much more dangerous than it already is. The backdrop of all this, of course, is numbers that we're hearing both actually from the minister and from Amnesty International, one of the groups that was there at that news conference. Uh, UNHCR are saying that we've reached, the, the world has reached 110 million displaced people, a record number of people. And even Sean Fraser's, you know, the immigration minister says, you know, this means that this issue does not go away. Uh, people are looking for safe havens, and Canada is, is one that is at the top of many people's lists.